Hello ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from Rada Lessons and welcome back to another video. Thank you all so much for tuning in. And in today's episode, we're gonna be taking a closer look at the 10 fragrances that I'm gonna be looking forward to wearing the most in the winter of 2019, 2020. And this is going to be my niche list. So make sure to stay tuned. Before I begin the list, I do want to just say that these are fragrances that cater to my personal taste. Uh, this list is subjective, of course. These are fragrances that I'm looking forward to wearing. And so just because they resonate with me and my personal taste doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to love these fragrances as well. And I do live in New Jersey. So we're talking about the New Jersey, New York, PA, tri-state tri area here on the East Coast. And uh, it does have a tendency of getting really cold right around this time of the year. As a matter of fact, it might dip into the 10s or the 20s, not as cold as my Canadian friends up north, but it does get pretty cold here too. So you're going to see fragrances that are constructed in a much deeper, richer way. So we have some tobacco, we have some spicy fragrances here, we have some gourmands, we have some boozy scents. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the list. So I do want to start off with a couple honorable mentions and the first honorable mention and I'll describe why this is an honorable mention, but this is actually a fragrance from my own brand. And my brand is called Navitus Parfum. And this fragrance is called Virtus. This fragrance was composed by Bertrand du Chafour, one of my favorite perfumers, very well established perfumer. And this is a tobacco based scent. What I can say about this fragrance is it's one of the creamiest, smoothest tobaccos that I've smelled in my life. It doesn't smell like a pipe tobacco. It's not rough. It's not overly spicy and it's not too heavy on the vanilla. So it's a nice balance of everything. And it actually has mango and fig milk in here, which I think contribute to the creaminess with a little bit of a sweet undertone. But the reason why I'm featuring this in this list, uh, first and foremost, is because I'm actually gonna be wearing it. It's my scent of the day today. I love this one. And uh, I also don't want to include it in the formal list because this is my brand. And so I'm trying to maintain some uh, impartiality there, but I'm definitely going to be wearing a lot of this one. And then the other fragrance that I would actually like to recommend that I put a dent in, uh, this one by Prada, part of their um, high tier line is called Marienbad. And this one is a little bit on the floral side. So I think I would have a hard time recommending it to people. It also reminds me of a Keiko Macheri fragrance called a Fleur de Peau. And so if you're not a fan of those types of fragrances, you might not really like this one, but I love this one. It's deep, it's rich. If you take a look at the color of the juice in the bottle, you can tell that this is definitely a heavy scent. The resins in here are gorgeous. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start the list. And I would like to start it off with my number 10. So my number 10 fragrance is one called Siberian Summer. Again, I'm going to leave all the information down below. The brand is called Arige Lador and it opens up really fresh and I enjoy the freshness and it dries down to this sort of cedar wood, resinous, um, oak moss, green kind of a scent that I think conveys a nice bit of elegance and sophistication. And I really enjoy this one. And so if you haven't had a chance to try this one, a Siberian Summer is an awesome fragrance that I've been enjoying this time of the year. The next one is by Manos Yerakinis, and this one is called Immortal. This is the number nine fragrance. And the reason I love this fragrance is because it takes an ingredient that I think is rather polarizing. So in the case of Immortal, a lot of people say it's spicy and it kind of smells like maple syrup. And I know uh, Dior's Eau Noir has uh, an Immortal ingredient and also New Harlem by Bond number nine. And I really enjoy both of those fragrances. I purchased both of those fragrances. And so I'm also really happy to be wearing this one in the winter months. And so if you're a fan of the Note of Immortal, definitely want to check out. I think it's one of the best. The next one on this list is a favorite of mine. This is one that I've talked about year in and year out. And um, I'm going to dip it a little bit lower on in this list just because I want to give some other fragrances a chance to uh, shine this season. But this one by Parfum de Marly is called Carlisle. And so this is uh, among one of the first Parfum de Marly fragrances that I acquired. I remember shooting my video for this one at Max Aroma Studios. And I really enjoyed this fragrance because it's a tobacco based scent, as I said earlier, or at least it gives me the impression of tobacco. I know it has some spices in there. It has a really hearty dose of vanilla. So if you're a fan of some of the sweeter fragrances out there, I think this is one that you might really, really enjoy. So Carlisle by the company Parfum de Marly. 
The next one on this list is a fragrance that is spicy, it's green, it's mature, it's elegant, it's sophisticated, and the few times that I've worn it, I just need a few sprays and I feel great for the rest of the day. And this one by Roja Parfum is called Danger. So this is a reinterpretation of one of their previous releases. So this is part of the Parfum Cologne line. And this one, again, as I detailed earlier, you have the green elements. It's really sophisticated, really manly, really dressed up. And I personally really enjoyed this one too. Not to suggest that it's um, a masculine release. I think it's unisex, anybody can pull it off, but I love wearing this one, especially right around this time of the year. The next one on this list does lean a little bit in sweeter territory, and you guys know that I love my gourmand fragrances. And this one I like for the fact that it's not overly gourmand. So this one actually takes it in sweet territory. There's something in here that kind of reminds me of coffee, almost as if it's in the territory or the wheelhouse of like a Montal Intense Cafe. This one by Arabian Nude is called A Seal Special Edition. And so this one, is a reinterpreted version of the original Asile, but I think I like this one a little bit better, and thus I picked this one up. So this is a really nice gourmand fragrance that is not overly sweet. It's not cloyingly or uh, tooth decayingly sweet, so I think you might really enjoy this one. So the next fragrance on this list is another one that I've been enjoying ever since October of last year when it was officially launched. And this is one that has a bit of sweetness to it. There's a spicy component to it as well. And there's also natural agarwood from India. And this one by Initio Parfum Privé, part of their Sacred Geometry collection, is called Oud for Greatness. And this is one, again, as I've said with some of the other fragrances in this list, namely this fragrance and this fragrance, one or two sprays will last you the entire day. And that's certainly the case for this fragrance here by Initio, Oud for Greatness. The Oud in this one is also not too overwhelming. There's an ethereal nature about it, but then there's also that bit of sweetness in here that I really enjoy as well. So this is one that I'm gonna love wearing uh, in the winter time. I can't wait to wear it more often. Number four on this list is a very playful, lighthearted scent. Uh, it is a gourmand lover's dream, and actually there's dream in the title. This one by Alexandria Fragrances is called Cacao Dreams. And this one kind of smells like a Belgian chocolate. It's very decadent, it's gourmand leaning, super gourmand leaning. And I found that this is also a really good fragrance to layer with other fragrances. And the reason I say that is because this is actually, in my opinion, uh, a fairly linear scent, which is not a bad thing at all, but I find that the smell that you get in the opening is gonna be very similar to what you smell in the dry down of this fragrance as well. So I really enjoy wearing this one. If you haven't checked this one out, please make sure to do so. It's just a very fun, lighthearted, uh, gourmand lover's paradise, especially if you're into chocolate-based fragrances. Number three on the list is like the third tobacco scent that I mentioned. I know Carlisle isn't really a tobacco scent, but this one is a little bit more on the spicy side, and this one is Red Tobacco by Mancera. So I first discovered this fragrance a couple years back, and as soon as I did, I loved it. I love the bottle, I love the look of it, and I love the way that it smells. And I think Mancera and Montal fragrances also have, and rightfully so, the reputation of lasting eons on your skin, and there's no exception with this one. Probably the ones that aren't as long lasting are some of their um, fresher iterations, like Cidrat Bois but this one does a phenomenal job on my skin and I love this one. The next one is another fragrance that I have been enjoying thoroughly uh, this season and it's one that um, I acquired recently. I started watching a few reviews online and I knew down the line I had to get my nose on it. I actually initially smelled this one at a friend's house and I fell in love with it. The perfumer for this one is Cecile Zerokian and I am loving her work more and more as the days go by. And this one by Nishan Istanbul is called Ani. This is a really gorgeous powdery vanilla that kind of smells like cocoa to my nose. And as opposed to this fragrance perhaps, it's not as gourmand leaning, but the gourmand elements are inevitably there and undeniably there. Oh my goodness, if you haven't tried this one yet, what are you waiting for? Definitely make sure to check it out. And 
the number one fragrance in this list actually came as a bit of a surprise to me because this is one that I have put on the back burner the entire summer and fall. I've actually busted it out just recently and this is one that I've worn to a company holiday party in the past and I remember smelling it on myself and thinking, man, I made the best decision ever today to wear this fragrance. It's boozy, a part of it kind of reminds me of like this fruit cocktail. It kind of smells like wine, but it's really dark dark, deep, mysterious, really long lasting. The endurance of this fragrance is incredible. And it's composed by an, a perfumer that I have a lot of respect for, who is Rase Fort. And this one by Fort and Manly is called Maduro. And it is such a comprehensively built scent, all aspects considered, very well put together. This The Overall aroma that this gives off is magnificent. And I think more importantly, and one of the reasons why I outlined earlier in this video that this is a personal list is because the memories that this conjures up are so positive. And now whenever I'm having a less than favorable day, I'm just not gonna wear this one because I don't want anything to taint or tarnish those memories. But I love Maduro by uh, Fort Manley. And so if you have had a chance to try this one, I would love to know what you think if you can go ahead and leave a comment down below. And additionally, I would love to hear from you guys, what fragrances are you looking forward to wearing the most this holiday season? And as the title suggests, I will be doing a giveaway attached to this video. All you need to do to enter the giveaway is leave a comment down below and I will pick the winner in one week's time. The winner will receive a five milliliter decan of any three fragrances in this collection and I'm so happy to fulfill that prize. Additionally, if you've tried any of these, leave a comment down below. If you're not subscribed to this channel and you took something of value from this video, I would love it if you could support me by subscribing. It would mean the world to me. Thanks again for watching. I love you all and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye.